Welcome, this is Najma Minhas with Global Village Space. I'm joined by Dr. Muit Pizada to continue our discussion from last time on the resumption of peace between India and Pakistan. Muit, today Hamad Azhar made a statement that Pakistan will start trade relations once again with India, starting off with importing cotton and sugar, sugar first and then cotton. What is your take on this? I think something like this was uh, expected. Uh, but perhaps not as fast as it happened, uh, which clearly points to the fact that there is a tremendous pressure uh, on Pakistan to move very quickly in normalizing its relationship with India. Uh, and this is what we had discussed in our last uh, interaction and discussion as well, uh, that though uh, fingers are being pointed and it is being referred that it is a Pakistani-driven uh, initiative in a third country, uh, is facilitating it, and then it has been said that the third country is UAE. Uh, but my, uh, my, my, uh, my fear is this, that this is probably a uh, Biden administration that wants, um, uh, that wants, uh, that wants a normalization in, between India and Pakistan to improve the optics because it wants a more meaningful uh, engagement and, uh, with, uh, with India, uh, and they want to bring India into the court. So some quarters are also hinting that this could be China after the resumption of, uh, after, the, after, the, after the seizing of hostilities between India and China, uh, they could be quite possible that China wants uh, the, uh, the tensions between India and Pakistan to come down uh, so that it wants, in fact, China wants India to be engaged uh, so that the India cannot uh, uh, flow effortlessly toward the American zone of influence. This is also one of the theory. But what we see right now is this. Uh, it's a huge political embarrassment uh, for Prime Minister Imran Khan. Right. Uh, because so he had I wanted to ask you that Ehsan Iqbal has described this as PTI and Imran Khan having sold out Pakistan. Um, so, and Imran Khan himself, Prime Minister Imran Khan, took a very strong stance on this in 2019, after August the 5th. He made statements in the United Nations, he talked about Modi, he talked about Hitler, he talked about appeasement. So to backtrack from that, what does this mean? I mean, what is Pakistan getting out of this? Uh, politicians in politics, you do backtrack. You want to forget about what you had said earlier. This happens everywhere. It is not only in Pakistan, India, it's, it happens everywhere. Look at what, how the Biden administration is backtracking on its earlier position on Saudi Arabia uh, and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who's still there. Uh, but uh, but it's, it's a huge embarrassment for Prime Minister Imran Khan. Uh, his opposition, principally the PMLN, uh, will roast him. Uh, the government's action of resumption of trade, which is merely optics, uh, because half a million ton of sugar and resumption of some cotton in trade from India uh, is not much in terms of uh, the economic needs of Pakistan. Yes, there are economic needs, but basically it's a, uh, it's a geostrategic move. It's an optics which facilitate the requirement of the Modi administration, because they always wanted Pakistan to put Kashmir on the side um, and resume dialogue and discussion on other issues. And resumption of trade is the basic Indian requirement. Because once the trade resumes and expands, then Pakistan, for all practical purposes, whatever the Prime Minister may write to Prime Minister Modi or whatever the Foreign Office and the Government of Pakistan might say, for all practical purposes, Pakistan has now accepted and given legitimacy to the actions of 5th August 2019. It has accepted the revocation of the Article 370. And now, um, uh, and now it, is, it is a very hard thing, hard job for the Prime Minister Imran Khan's government uh, to explain its actions to Pakistani media and to the opposition. This might actually provide a convenient trigger for the PDM parties, which were in a disarray, uh, to get together on the slogan that, you know, the Imran Khan government has sold Kashmir and sold Pakistan's interest. So altogether, they can actually have a huge summit meeting and this might put new force and energy in them. So the Prime Minister Imran Khan government looks very bad at the moment unless it does some serious damage control. What does it mean for the Kashmiris themselves? They recently had elections in which both the major parties participated as well. Um, do they have to fight for this change of union status themselves? They can't rely on Pakistan any longer? Pakistan is not totally out of the equation, but Pakistan's role uh, uh, is decreasing by the year. 
Uh, it is not a new thing. It is, it is not something that has happened in the past two and a half years. Pakistan's ability to steer the events or to shape the opinions inside the occupied Jammu and Kashmir has been decreasing steadily uh, for the past 10, 15 years, uh, which is the reality because of India's growing influence uh, with the United States and the Western world. It has been pressurizing Pakistan. It has entangled uh, Pakistan into so many issues like Mumbai uh, terrorism, which still to my mind remains very mysterious as to how and why could Pakistan be involved into it, uh, has helped India a lot in delegitimizing Pakistani state in terms of foreign policy and on Kashmir. Um, and, and now if you look at the current situation, uh, Pakistan precarious situation of Pakistani economy, uh, Pakistan's uh, uh, position and need for IMF, World Bank, and Asian Development Bank, which are all principally American-controlled institutions, uh, and then Pakistan's being dragged and fatter for the number of fears in the gray list, uh, which is once again principally an American influence, and Pakistan uh, hopefully now might actually get out of the fat of gray list, for which it has worked very hard, but I think it will also happen with a slight nod and concurrence uh, from India. So, um, uh, so Pakistan, so India has very cleverly and intelligently exploited Pakistan's economic vulnerabilities. It's India and United States together pushing Pakistan in the desired direction. So I, I'm a bit confused because only yesterday, Prime Minister Imran Khan sent a letter uh, in answer to Prime Minister Modi's letter to him, and in which he mentioned that, thank you for your letter, and he mentioned the context of Kashmir in which all talks would, would start again, and the relationship would start. And yet less than 24 hours later, they resume trade. Um, I mean, how can 24 hours make such a big difference in terms of thinking for a, for a government? No, I don't think that the uh, decision of the resumption of the trade was necessarily uh, written after his letter. I think they're playing on two fronts. Uh, one is this that, you know, we would like to uh, have a comprehensive, meaningful dialogue with you and that must focus on Jammu and Kashmir, which is their foreign policy optics uh, for the public, for the media and for the world. The other, the practical step. I think the resumption of the trade is the practical step. And also look at the fact that how fast the things are moving. Look at Islamabad dialogue, Pakistan military chiefs, a statement over there that we have to bury the past and uh, uh, the need for a conducive atmosphere in Jammu and Kashmir and how quickly uh, Narendra Modi responded by two messages in the same week and now comes the straight concession. So it clearly looks that there is an external force uh, that is pushing uh, both the countries, but it's actually pushing both the countries principally in India's advantage because India's principal need that Kashmir should be uh, kept aside, forgotten, uh, its, its position within India should be legitimized and only Pakistan can legitimize it. Yes, India has de facto control, its control is very strong, it is physically in possession of Kashmir, Pakistan and no other power had any means of displacing uh, India from Kashmir, but the legitimacy had to come from Islamabad. And with this resumption of the trade thing, Islamabad has given that legitimacy uh, to whatever actions Narendra Modi has done in Kashmir. And all Kashmiris are principally on their own, unless Pakistan, through the back channel, uh, persuades the Delhi establishment in giving some concessions to Kashmiris, which can also take the form of uh, that P this Mahbuba Mufti's party and national conference that have together won the recent by uh, the local government elections uh, in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, they can at some stage uh, demand that the union's uh, territory of Jammu and Kashmir should be given the status of a state, which I think will happen in due time. And then they can negotiate with Delhi uh, for getting an, uh, of some sort of Article 371, which I think eight other Indian states have uh, in, the, in the northeast and the east, east side of India. So, so, of course, the Article 370 will not come back, but some sort of Article 371 section, EGF, uh, there will be another section to dealing with Kashmir and to and to take their concerns into consideration. I think this is what's going to happen there. That Kashmiris should stand on their own two feet and, and not rely on Pakistan or not have expectations from Pakistan to do anything for them. Um, we thank so much for your time today once again. Thank you.